Just respond, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, we're, we're recording now, and um, but you'll need to make that announcement. That's okay. Um, good evening. Uh, this is the Town Services and Outreach Committee. Uh, and the reason that I'm chairing for the moment is because we're each year as the committees are reappointed or appointed, um, they have to elect a chair and a vice chair. And one of my jobs is to run the meeting until that happens. So uh, let me start with a couple things. Like, first of all, given that we have a quorum of the TSO present, uh, I'm calling the meeting to order at 7.04. This meeting is available by Zoom and also can be viewed later on a tape. It's also available by phone. And we are allowed to do virtual meetings based on the legislature. And uh, that has extended the open meeting law to allow this. So I'm going to start in alphabetical order. Um, just make sure you tell me you can hear and be heard on a Devlin Gothier. Hello, I can hear you. Great. Anika Lopes. I can hear you. And you know, Shalini Balmilne actually was the first one, so much for my alphabetical order. Um, I'm here. Dorothy Pam. I can hear. Thank you. And Andy Steinberg. I'm here. And Kelly Miller is joining us tonight as our note taker. And on, Athena is with us, uh, at least initially. So uh, without further ado, uh, here's how we go. You may volunteer to be present, to be chair of TSO. You can be nominated to be chair of TSO. Or if things get dicey, we'll draft you to be chair of TSO. So with that, uh, a, a nomination or a volunteer does not require a second. So I'm going to ask Anna, who's just put her hand up. I'd love to nominate Anika Lopes to continue in the position of chair. Okay. Dorothy, I can't hear you. I second the nomination. <laughs> Thank you, even though one's not required. I know. I know. Are there any other nominations? Anika, do you accept the nomination? I have to be able to hear you. Yes, thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. So we will take a vote. And this time I will do it alphabetically. Uh, first of all, Anika, is there anything you would like to say? Thank you for trusting me to continue as chair. And I'm looking forward to the good work that we'll bring forward together. Thank you. Shalini? Yes. Uh, Anna Devon Gothier? Yes. Anika? Yes. Dorothy? Yes. And Andy? Yes. It's unanimous. The floor is now open for nominations for vice chair. Shalini? I nominate Anna for vice chair. She and wants to continue. Anika? Second. Dorothy. Okay. Uh, Anna, do you accept the nomination? I do. Are there any other nominations at this time? Anna, is there anything you would like to say? Anika has made my job very easy so far, and I hope to continue to support her ever I can if I'm selected to continue in this role. Thank you all for your support. Okay, and we'll do the vote again. Shalini Baumil? Yes. On Devlin Gothier? Yes. Anika Lopes? Yes. Dorothy Pam? Yes. Andy Steinberg? Yes. It's unanimous. Congratulations to both of you. I look forward to uh, the good work of this committee. Uh, you have a lot of things on your plate and uh, please let me know how I can support you in accomplishing those. And with that, I'm going to go to my other meeting. Okay, bye. Thank you. Anna, you have your hand up? Yes, I do. I, I, this is the point where I do have to leave you all. I'm sorry. I was just jumping in for that quick agenda item. 
Um, this is the only meeting I can't make, so I will be back again with you all again soon. So okay. much. See you. Thank you. All right, everyone, I'll have to ask you to bear with me if I suddenly lose voice. Um, <clears throat> with this, seeing as we have no town manager appointments, um, we'll go into our, our schedule. Has everyone had a chance to look at? Thank you. Thank you, Athena, for pulling that up. Has everyone had a chance to look at the schedule and um, consider our uh, suggestion that um, made good sense by Andy that we continue to start our meetings at 7 p.m. to accommodate the tech committee? So what are some of the ones in yellow mean? Oh, it's uh, that's either or, okay. Right, so I left some options. So. Um... I, I put this together for the committee. There was, I didn't know if you'd like to have two meetings in July or if you wanted to, how you wanted to break these up. I think uh, some folks have kids doing April vacation. So this was an either or depending on um, what folks were doing in April. And then maybe you you did or didn't want to have that August one or you wanted to pick. Um, so I, I just left some some options because I wasn't sure about everyone's schedules. So that was what I was anticipating that would be part of the discussion tonight. You can, mm -hmm. you can leave these, you know, we could, we could put, pick one of these and go if needed, or we could do this however you'd like. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to just start it off by saying on April, April, I would prefer the 20th to the 13th. It's putting in a dibs there. Any objections? No, not for me. Anyone else? Uh, see, now I have a, a question. Um, and also for everyone else, are there any dates just depending any of the options um, that anyone would like to kind of keep and as needed um, in the event that we do need to fit a meeting in due to our workload? We kind of have a ballpark of when that could be. Mm. Hmm. June. Wait, Anika, can you repeat that again? So with some of the options, oh, wait a minute, the, the other ones are um, fairly here, close. Yeah, here it's, do you want? They're, yeah, they're tight. So Great. maybe maybe the um for August, since there's a 24th or 31, we could maybe keep that as if, you know, if needed. That way, if we, let's just say at that time, if we do need an extra meeting and we could look at that in, a, in advance, um, if we are a little behind or for whatever reason that we might, at least we have something um, tentatively planned. <clears throat> but August is also a big vacation, I'd imagine. So any thoughts? Well, I think we have a question about June. It is really, do we want three meetings in June? Because that's mm -hmm. what it's, it's got there. The 29th of June would be the 3rd in June, mm -hmm. or it would be having two meetings in July. So I don't really, it doesn't matter to me, but um, if, if anyone's going away in the month of July or the month of August, um, speak up because, you know, we'll, we'll accommodate you. May I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can we just do both of these if needed? Um, the 29th of June is, is if needed, and the 27th of July is if yeah. needed, both of them. Oh, okay. R right, just so, because I, I don't imagine everyone maybe has their summer plans laid out yet. Exactly. And then um, my suggestion would be to nix the 24th because that gives kind of a wider space in between August 10th and 31st in case people do have summer plans. But this isn't set in stone. If the committee adopts it and we need to adjust things, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we've we've seen mm -hmm. we're, we're okay to move things around if, if we need to, but it might be just helpful to have have those like mm -hmm. that. Makes right. sense. How is that? 
Makes sense to me. Would you, Shawnee, I see your hand is up. Yeah, no. Oh, once I'm I'm okay with what yeah. Athena proposed. I just had a different question um, mm -hmm. for Athena. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Do you have the CRC <clears throat> schedule also? I did try to make these on alternating weeks. Okay. Is that okay. that's yeah. I, I assumed that's what we all wanted. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is taking into account that. Okay. Thank right. You. I tried to I tried to avoid tried very hard to avoid um, okay. doing these back, and some, back yeah meetings. and some overlap is fine because now we've also pushed this forward to seven so it's mm -hmm. fine like today but Athena was very thoughtful with, for both CRC and TAC. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So is this? Um, I have to admit that there's a um, conflict in that Dorothy jumped in on the April date and I would have gone the other way. Okay. I'm more likely to have a problem on the 20th than on the prior week. And uh, it's not set in stone because uh, schedule, it's a family problem. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I, I it, looks it just makes it, it's a less certain date. Right. Are you flexible to go back to the 13th, Dorothy? Um, I could just miss a meeting. Um, there's a, a, a speaker series and a friend is speaking and, and it's at Amherst Women's Club and I have to be there. So, you know, but I could just miss a meeting. Um, I think family and vacation are really important. So I think, you know, Andy should do, we should, we should accommodate Andy, but you know, of course, the speech could be changed. Things schedules change, but right now I have a conflict. Yeah, I mean that's the problem too. That there's not a hundred percent certainty. It's just that the thirteenth is safe and the twentieth is uncertain. So it's sort of in that category too. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm willing to go with the twentieth. There's a possibility that even though I'll be and the other things, it depends upon what's going on with, uh, at yeah. that time, but it's possible that I could make it because Zoom meetings I could make from anywhere, or if we can't do Zoom meetings, then I still could uh, probably, well, I could do remotely anyway. Would you know in, you know, maybe March, because as, a, as Athena said, that we could change, we could change that. We could change I, I, I hope so. Uh, okay. So we could we could leave it and then if if you know need be we can change mm -hmm. that. So we'll leave it for the twentieth for now. Oops. Yeah. We'll check, and then we'll we'll, check in and then make sure yeah, we have a quorum for that day. I can I can make it hard for Anika and, and just reminder, uh, Mila Sherman is giving a speech. Please, that's that's not fair. That's not <laughs> fair. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I thought someone else was talking. So, uh, do we need to vote on this schedule, Athena? Uh, yeah. Let's okay. uh, see if there's a motion to adopt the schedule as uh, presented at this meeting. Mm hmm. Oh, I will, I will, I will still move. Okay. okay. Thank you. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give a call. Andy. Yes. Shalini. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I'm a yes. Great. Okay, so we are going to move on to public comment. If we have anyone with us in the audience, I see that we have two, Darcy Juwan and Jennifer Taub. Hi to both of you. Thank you for joining us. Would either of you like to make a comment? And if so, would you raise your hand, please? <clears throat> okay. Oh, Jennifer. Jennifer. Oh, hi. It's, it's really not a comment. I just was 
I'm, I'm just listening and I didn't know whether waste hauler was going to come up, but so I'm just in the audience. I just wanted to say that's just why I'm here. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Okay, so moving right along, we are having quite a, a um, I just saw that we have a caller joining us in. Uh, we were just moving out of public comment, um, but if you would like to make one, please alert us and we will bring you in. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. We are having a fairly brief meeting this evening. Uh -huh. But we're going to move right into approval of minutes. So we have both the December fifteenth minutes and our January 12, December fifteenth, twenty twenty two, and our January twelfth, twenty twenty three minutes. Both regular meetings. Was everyone? Did everyone have a chance to look the minutes? Okay. Uh, all right. Would anyone like to move to approve the minutes? I'm happy to. If I may, before uh, I'll make the motion in just a second, but uh, I offered some um, changes and uh, to the first set of minutes, and uh, they have been adopted. And the, Athena sent out revised minutes, and uh, um, Shalini may have also made some suggested changes to. Um, one portion of those minutes also. And I think that uh, everything has been incorporated from our suggestions. So based upon um, that, I would like to uh, move that we approve the minutes um, as am amended for December 15, 2022, and um, as uh, submitted for January 12, 2023. Um, could, could I ask a question? Um, I thought I'd printed two December 15th minutes and threw one out, but the one that I have in my hand does not say revised. Does it say revised on the minutes? I didn't put revised. I didn't put red lines. I just, I'm sorry. I, the, the, the updated draft didn't include that, okay, but fine. So this it, is the, the one that's posted, it has been updated with mm -hmm. the idea. Thank you. Changing. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Dorothy. All right. So we have a call and Shalini. Yes. Andy. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I am a yes. Thank you. All right, we will move on to announcements. Does anyone have an announcement that they would like to share? Goings on, I know there are a lot of, um, there's a lot coming up um, for uh, Black History Month, but go ahead, Andy. Yeah, I guess uh, I should, so that uh, Shelley and I as uh, the two co-sponsor members of this committee, co-sponsors of the, uh, by the bylaw proposed on trash hauling changes that uh, we uh, are, you know, we have talked about uh, trying to strengthen the work plan. And uh, I think that one of our first step is going to be uh, suggesting that we inquire with uh, the town manager and the superintendent of public works about um, where things stand as far as um, what they have in a uh, work plan with um, Susan Waite and what the timeline is for Susan Waite to complete the work that they've asked her to do. And uh, then I think that we'll be in a position to move forward uh, and uh, actually uh, define the steps that need to belong to the committee. And um, that uh, we would like to have a goal of making sure that a bylaw amendment 
is in final form for, for presented and presentation to the council and action to the council during um, everyone's current term. Uh, mm -hmm. and I'll turn it to Shalini to see if she's anything to add. Yeah, and no, thank you, Andy, for uh, providing that update. I completely agree with that. And um, I think I just wanted to add to that that once we have that information from Paul about and the workflow uh, from Susan, then I think then uh, it's on us as the TSO committee. We can work with Anika to come up with the you know in the agenda how to create a work plan for us in terms of the discussion points that we need to have for the bylaw with respect to the bylaw and um uh i also wanted to share that um the zero waste um group did a residence survey that uh, susan had asked them to do to get feedback from the existing residents about um different questions and that was vetted by some of us counselors and also by the town staff and they're like 400 residents who have so far responded to that so like there's going to be a really healthy amount of information that susan will get from the residents uh and then the other thing is um i think once we have as andy was saying that information then i think we need to sit with you anika and figure out the plan and um set the dates for the other committee members to also send their non-financial is that athena too much yes, going too much athena? detail okay <laughs> okay is that what you're going to say so so this becomes a little bit tricky because if the three of you sit down and meet then it, it is a meeting of the tso oh. so um what one had, of us uh -huh, yeah so so i had suggested to um anika that we have a preliminary conversation with paul because it's going to take quite a bit of coordination between the committee members and staff and paul um right and, and i was sort of um using mandy's um crc um work plan as sort of a, a template right. and yeah and so that's going to take quite a bit of coordination obviously paul is he's not here tonight he's gone today and tomorrow so we're hoping to have sort of an initial conversation with him before the next mm -hmm. tso meeting and then a much more robust conversation with tso to sort of kind of put the put the initial steps into that work plan using the crc work plan as a guide and okay. um and, ha and have more information from him and Guilford at that point. So we were hoping to just sort of browse through what TSO has on its plate tonight and then get, get more into it next time when we have Paul with us. Okay, yeah. that would be amazing. Thanks for letting me jump in and-, and Yeah, no, you. no, no, that's really <laughs> helpful. Yeah. Thank you. And Kelly, your hand is up. I just wanted to ask uh, for the sake of the minutes, uh, this is a question for Andrew Steinberg. Um, what is the uh, title of the uh, bylaw that you were um, making the announcement about previously? What do we what do we have it now as Shalini? Is it is it on the uh, worksheet? Oh, uh, waste hauler bylaw. It says universal refuse, comma recycling and compost. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's the one we're talking about, Kelly. Sorry, thanks for it. Asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We tend to use shorthand a lot. <laughs> True. So, just once more, it's universal refuse, comma, comma, recycling, recycling, and composting. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Great. Right. Yeah. So, and I'll also add just quickly. I know last. Um, meeting before we were, before I actually, my battery was um, lost. Um, I was just giving a brief update on the walk we had on East Pleasant. Um, and we were actually looking at a dark patch of sidewalk. And um, and then I wanted to thank Paul, who's not here with us. You know, I'm happy to report that that light is back on. Mm. Um, so yes, and that has made a big difference. And we've already had um, plenty of residents thanking, um, thanking us all for that work. Great. So with that, um, speaking of, so here is what we have on our plate, have in process, have finished. 
So right in front of us is just what we have finished and what is not complete and what is in process. And then again, what we have not started yet. Has everyone had a chance to look through this list? Um, I have, but I have to say that um, a lot of it is uh, the stuff underneath under other other regular business per committee charge. That so much of that is extraordinarily general that I don't really know, you know, what we will do. The only one that I had anything specific on was the last one, which was review and make recommendations to town council on issues and measures regarding the relationship between the town of Amherst institutions of higher education. And I just learned something interesting with maybe last night or the night before at the CSSJC meeting that uh, UMass used to have an upward bound program um, on it. I think it was I think it was that meeting or it might have been another meeting. I was, I've been on a lot of meetings, but that there used to be an upward bound program, which was really good. And, you know, I served Bob and I were counselors on an upward bound program a long, long time ago on the Cornell campus. And we have sometimes bumped into some of the students who are on it and they have said, you know, life-changing, very important. And um, I think that one of our institutions of higher education, I think we should have an upward bound program again. Um, if not UMass, then uh, Amherst College. I know they have a lot of fine programs in the summer. When I'd be there for the co-festival uh, theater project, I'd see groups of young people around but this would be a program just for people who lived in Am young people who lived in Amherst, mm -hmm. uh, whereas I think the Amherst College programs draw from a very much wider uh, group. So the person to um to speak with who's um actually I'm very close to is a man Don Brown, who he was actually the first um, black director for Upward Bound here in Amherst and the youngest. Um, my mom was actually at um, Upward Bound, and I think you have generations up to like fairly recently mm -hmm. that were there. So um, I do think that that is in the works. There was also community member um, Jim Collins, who was a direct, the director for um, Upward Bound when they started. I think it was in the 70s. It was in the 70s. Well, I was I was on it probably the first year it existed. Um, it was 1966. In Amherst? No, at Cornell. Oh, yeah, I'm just talking about the one here in Amherst. Oh, the one here, yeah, but 70s was pretty early days. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. the one here. Um, I was, I actually was just talking with um, with John Brown last night. He talks about Upward Bound all the time um, and his experiences here with it. It's a great program, and I, I believe some of that work is is still they they ha there's definitely a group here um, that still does this this work with um with Upward Bound. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they still have one on the ground that they're partially at UMass. Mm -hmm. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, um, I'll remember the woman's name that I know leads it now, um, the work that they're doing to reinitiate, and I'll definitely connect okay. you with those Thank names. You. You're welcome. Very much. Thank you very much. Some group. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Uh, Shalini? Yeah, I just wanted to speak to the community engagement process that I had presented early on and we never put a closure to it. But I just want to say that we ran that process in CRC with the rental resident re rental re residential ugh, residential it's rental changing. bylaw. Yeah. And uh, we did the survey and we've gone through the whole process almost. So there was a lot of lessons that we learned what worked, what didn't work. And uh, I think just seeing how powerful it is when you get a robust participation from the different stakeholders, because normally we tend to hear from the same group, but just by making a little intentional effort, we did hear from a lot more tenants, we heard from a lot more landlords than we normally do, and it really provided a very well-rounded it's still not representative of the whole town for sure, but even so we were able to get a lot more different voices, different issues and like looking at the same issue from three different perspectives, I think was really helpful. So I would like to present based on the learnings from that at some point present uh, to this committee and then see how we can formalize that and offer that as 
uh, recommendation to the rest of council that when we are looking at issues, especially those that affect a lot of people, affect the quality of our lives, how each committee can adapt it for their use and have a process for how to go about it. Did you use something like that? Did you use that as well? When I noticed, um, I meant to ask you when you were talking about the um, the outreach that was going on for the waste haul and bylaw. Did you use that as well? And did you? And I also wanted to just clarify. Did you say that you had four hundred responses? So that wasn't uh, me or any of the council members. That was the zero waste um, committee. Yeah. Did they, they, did they use something like what you're talking about? Huh? So they did their own survey, and that is basically a survey. And <laughs> it's not necessarily the process that I'm talking about, but I think it goes to speak to the idea that by doing a survey and using different stakeholder groups, and different considering like you know different we all counselors have different uh email lists or different people have different lists and how we can use those to send out our surveys and collection processes to a wider swath of people so that's what the zero waste people did i think they sent it out to all their groups and then they send it out and they've gotten 400 people okay. responding um, but that's a little different. That's like just a survey, like what I'm proposing, which sort of I presented was just the process that we have a systematic process of defining what is the problem we're solving for, what are the intentions for a particular issue or problem that we're solving for, who is getting impacted. And it sounds really cumbersome, but it's actually a very thoughtful process and it moves really quickly if done properly. Okay. Can I ask a question, Shalini, just so I know what to mm -hmm. put, put in here, if that's okay, Anika? Of course. So it sounds like what you were suggesting was that TSO take up a similar community engagement process with the refuse recycling and composting, and then mm -hmm. use that as a framework to develop kind of a tool to recommend to the council. Is that what? I, so that I would mean, be almost too, so... So actually, I've already, we've already tested and tried it in CRC. So what I wanted to do for TSO was just to present it to us, and then we should definitely use it for the for the waste uh, hauler bylaw. So, but, but, but the then, tool would be kind of a separate. Yeah, I think the tool is separate. And I think, is it under? Um, it's sort of under like the advice on matters to broaden participation and ensure regular and transparent communication and outreach to residents of Amherst. I think it sort of comes under that. Right. Yeah. It makes sense that it would be yeah. in TSO, within TS, TSO's kind of jurisdiction, but I right. don't know if you wanted this as like also a sub heading under here, or if we just want to include that in the work plan that's developed for that. Okay, let me see. Uh, under so under you you know yeah so under refuse thing we should definitely use that process because we do want to have engaged with different like whether it's e getting feedback from ECAC whether it's getting feed like identifying who all which are the committees that we want to hear from, um, which you know what are the, who are the stakeholders that might be affected and how do we reach out to them for the public forum that we will be doing how do we make sure that we send out and reach out to all of them? And if indeed we need other tools for engagement or is public forum going to be enough? So this is part of this process and also, yeah, and also its own, its thing, own thing. thing. Got it. Yeah, okay. right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts? Down your hand is still up. Yeah, and I think this the speeding thing, we've been hearing a lot about that. Everyone is, you know, with all the accidents happening in our neighboring towns and here and there. And we've heard, I think all of us have heard in our neighborhood, some road or the other has some issue with it. So I want to hear what Andy has to say about it. Yeah, I've raised my hand to comment on it too. I think that that's a 
big one that has uh, is important to a lot of members of the community. We certainly have been hearing about it for um, a long time, going back to the last election and before. Uh, what I had suggested at the time was in the very first year of the council, this was uh, the, whole, the whole subject of uh, the public ways was actually assigned to CRC and uh, TSO was split off because CRC was so big that it didn't make sense. Uh, but that the then members of CRC received a very um, helpful presentation from Captain Ting of the police department and uh, Jason Skeels, the traffic engineer from the uh, public works. And uh, they talked about what were the challenges to creating changing speed limits and enforcing speed limits and uh, what the law is. And uh, at this point, if we're gonna take this up again, and I think that we should be considering it because there's a lot of um, anxiety about it, we may want to ask um, Captain Ting and uh, um, Mr. Skeels if they would um, come back to the committee, to this committee and uh, uh, sort of repeat their presentation. Uh, and because I think that it was, it was helpful, but it got lost because it was lost in a committee that just had no capacity to deal with it at all. And, uh, but the whole question of uh, what the law says about how you, how a town or city can change speed limits and uh, what the process is, what the standards are, uh, is a uh, not a simple issue. And then all of the other pieces that I described. Thank you. Very simple um, question, Shalini. Wait, did anyone else want to say something? Sorry, I'm happy I, to speak. Well, Athena, go ahead. Athena, I, yeah. I just wanted to say I made a note of Andy's suggestion on here. I'm sending it to all of you so you have it, and, and I need to hop off. So good night, okay. everybody. But I'll send this back Thank to you, you with those changes. Thank you, Athena. Thanks, Athena. Bye. I was just going to say that uh, at the MMA, I spoke with people from uh, the select board at, in Hadley, and because of the recent accident, they actually spoke with the people at DOT. And so they were saying that the DOT has really changed its stance, is very cooperative now. I don't know if that's something, but I was just wondering, and, and then I also spoke with one of the council members from Northampton, and they're also dealing with the speeding issue and all. So I wonder if it makes sense to reach out to them and see what they have learned and in terms of the process and how we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have to be careful because I've, um, you have to remember that Hadley, their mm -hmm. problem was Route 9, and that's a state highway. It is a different set of oh, that's true. than uh, okay. a lot of the streets that we have. We do have a section of Route 9 that is applicable to the same uh, laws, but it's really the section okay. that goes out towards your house, so uh, where, where you live. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, a lot of some of the other uh, parts and uh, that's not where the largest number yeah. of complaints come from. Uh, I think we can all name the streets that we hear about from uh -huh. various people and um, none of them are uh, state. state roads. Okay. They're more uh, major arterial roads of the town. Hmm. Okay. So maybe we can at least send Anika our list of like all the emails that we receive from our residents that these are the roads that we've heard there's been a problem. And so we can all send it all to you and Athena or whatever. And mm -hmm. then and then the staff will know like which roads are stayed and which are our town and how we can move forward then. That would be helpful. Thank you. All right, um, any other comments? 
or thoughts about upcoming agenda? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So uh, with that, we do not have. Um, there was something brought up that was not anticipated. But so no. oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Uh, just last thing, and we have all these things. And again, my question would be, how are we prioritizing in terms of, uh, should we do them in parallel or um, like the ones that, so one of the things is that the waste bylaw, we do know that it has been accepted as a town manager mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. And so that's definitely a priority. And even given the number of residents who've spoken in favor. So that's a priority, it mm -hmm. seems like. So that's something we can start working on immediately, but I'm not saying we should only work on that. So like the way we're doing in CRC is like, we have been working on the rental with a lot of focus, but then there are other issues that come up. So we keep time for other issues as well. So, but again, the other issues, how are we prioritizing? Like, do we do speeding? Do we do the community engagement? Do we do like Well, you know what could be helpful? As um, Athena pointed out, we will have a preliminary meeting just about some upcoming agendas. And so perhaps if everyone could send um, similar to um, how Dorothy suggested last year, you know, order of priorities um, and just send them. Um, you know, to Athena and I, and then we'll, you know, come up with something and then of course, bringing it back to the committee so we can sort it out um, together and adjust what needs be. But then it, at least we have, you know, we, we have a clear understanding. We know what, we know what our parties are, then we'll know um, what everyone thinks um, and move it forward to make sure that um, we fit, we fit it in um, within this year and can track our progress. Does that sound okay to everyone? Do we have a template to rank rank it or should we, I think last year we were sent a matrix or should we take this list and then write in rank order it or something? Yes, that, that would be helpful. I mean, okay. if, if you'd like something that's a little more specific, we can send, but if you could go from the list and just put rank it. Know, what what your thoughts and, and then um, you right. know, even others, whatever else might come to mind after the meeting. Right, so we can just put a rank order, like one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. like that, something like and that. Just, just give me one moment. I just want to give a date for that, so that way mm -hmm. I can bring all of that with me. Hang on, just one moment, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so if you could do this, if everyone could get this to Athena and I by the second, or by the actually the first, if possible, the first of, of February. <clears throat> just ranking the four that um, are marked as still needing work. Yes. Or not started yet, even too. <laughs> yeah. Anything that is that is there aside for if it's not finished is up for grabs. It's up for rank. And if there's something else that you think of that you want, then add that as well, just so we're aware. And then of course we'll we'll finalize together, but at least this way we can. Ultimately, have we something know what might be referred to us as yeah. if other things come before the council and then get need to get referred to a committee. Yes. So we could be picking up others we don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. This is true. So we could have a, this is what we know. And then, of course, we leave room. The next part is what else could come to us. I can't imagine that we would go a year without some other things coming to us. But it'd be nice. But... <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. This was a, a quick meeting, but it's nice seeing all of your faces again. And um, so I will see you soon and meeting adjourned. Have a great rest of the night. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations for being chair. <laughs>